All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. So um, before I begin, I have a little task for you all. So I want you all to do something that we as human beings love doing. Imagining. So I want you to visualize a farmer. Think of a very hardworking farmer in the field. Think of what the farmer looks like. Just get a rough idea. Got it? All right. Now, the second thing I want you to do is visualize a beautiful dancer. Think of a very graceful ballet dancer giving a center stage performance. Got it? Okay. Now, how many of you thought of, is my presentation ready? Is there someone to control it? Okay. How many of you thought of, wait, this when I spoke about the farmer? And how many of you thought of this when I spoke about the dancer? Now, I could list about a hundred professions that we as human beings associate only with a particular gender, right? And I'm not here to blame you or blame society. I'm here to make you think. I'm here to tell you that by birth, we as human beings associate the words beautiful and graceful with women and the words hardworking and outdoor activities in general with men. So, hello everybody. My name is Shagun Sethi and I'm here to present an idea. Man, a gender that is so glorified and talked about and which almost seems fascinating to me as a girl is actually not that fascinating. It's actually very difficult to be a man in this society where we refuse to think, sympathize and understand. We as a society refuse to accept anything that is different from what we've been brought up to believe. And today I'd like to talk about equality for men. And how when this equality is denied, we women become victims too. I'd like to show you that both men and women have problems and neither of them have caused it deliberately for the other. It's just that the world has decided to put women's issues at a center stage. Now I know what I'm saying may sound weird and absurd to you all right now. Because we as humans are conditioned to believe that men are the reason for 99.9% .9 of our problems. But breaking news. Men by birth have big shoes to fill. They're supposed to look a certain way, act in a certain way, talk in a certain way. Their voice has to sound like a certain thing. Otherwise, they're not men. Right? Now, before we go any further, let's define two basic words. Words you and I use every single day. And none of us know what they mean. We use gender and sex like synonyms. As far as we're concerned, you can start calling gender sex as soon as you're old enough to say the word without giggling. Gender is a social construct. Gender is enforced. Gender refers to the social responsibilities the two sexes are expected to perform. Sex, on the other hand, refers to either of the two main categories, male and female, into which humans and most other living things are divided on the basis of their reproductive functions. Sex doesn't tell us what we should look like, act like, wear or do. Gender does. Society does. Gender tells a girl to look after the baby. Sex only tells her to give birth. Gender tells a man what he should wear, what he should look like. Whether he should be the boss, the breadwinner. Sex doesn't. Luckily for us women, we now have the options to work. Men, on the other hand, must work. What else will they do? Sit at home, look after the house, go grocery shopping, become house husbands. Which society will allow that? Men are imprisoned by gender expectations and all of us contribute to that every single day. You know, when a four-year-old boy is given an office set or a doctor kit to play with, he's expected to work when he grows up. When a 15-year-old boy, like all of us here, are forced to take up science and commerce, he's expected to get a corporate job or a high-paying job. When a 20-year-old cries of a broken heart, he's called weak. And when a 40-year-old decides to take a day off from work to look after his own child, he's seen as a loser. Even the Webster Dictionary defines a man or a boy as a person who possesses the qualities such as strength and courage that men are traditionally supposed to have. So basically, what we're saying is that a 2-year-old boy has to become a macho man in 5 years. And if he can't, He's not a boy. 
Why is it that when I see the word man, an image of a tall, muscular human being wearing a suit, sitting behind a table at work and getting a six-figure salary comes to my mind? Why is it that when someone comes up to me and says, Hi, I'm a boy and I'm a ballet dancer. I flip inside my stomach. Why is it that I expect a boy to give me a seat in the metro or the bus, even if I'm not old or pregnant? You know, so deeply ingrained are these preconceived notions about men and women that even our world's laws have an undertone of this bilge. Let's take an example. The Indian government, like many other governments now, have started giving paternity leave to men. But how many men do you know who actually avail this leave? It goes against their pride. And how many of those few men use this leave to look after their child? How often do you hear a man say, yes, I'm on paternity leave and I'm looking after my baby? Because if you are a man, why do you have to sit at home and look after your own child? Of course you don't. So now time for the big question. How does all of what I just spoke about lead to inequality? It's simple. As soon as we give a person responsibility, we give them authority. When men are given the pressure of working and earning, by simple elimination, it means that women do the housework. We raise our boys and make them believe that their place is outside the house. And that when they come home tired, they deserve to be served hot food, looked after and spoken to with respect. Unfortunately, we raise our girls to believe that their ambitions aren't even half as important. If they're lucky, they can get married to some rich hotshot guy and sit at home and do the housework. What's worse is that she will do that and she'll impart the same values to her children. Ladies and gentlemen, for us to start talking about gender inequality, we have to realize where the problem starts and then we have to uproot it. Men have to be included in the conversation because gender inequality is their issue too. Why is it that when a girl smiles at you in the metro, you'll happily smile back? But if a boy smiles at you, you will assume he's thinking of something else. Why is it that I have three boys in my class because I belong to a liberal arts section? Or there are three girls in a science section, for that matter. Why don't we have a team of jazz dancers or ballet dancers who are boys in our school, or in fact in any school? Why don't we have a girls cricket team which is popular? How often do you watch a girls cricket team match? The minute this practice of expecting and assuming stops, we'll enter a world with equality. The minute we give preference on the basis of performance and not gender, we win the battle. Boys can be just friends too. They can choose to cry and fuss about the little things in life. They can choose to be homemakers and full-time fathers. They can choose to be cooks and artists and dancers. They can choose to like the color pink and like to listen to Taylor Swift without being called gay. Girls can like to be sporty. They can like to play video games. They can like to listen to Eminem and like the color blue and work a full-time job without being called tomboys. But only if we, the also elite society with such a modern thinking, allow it. We're the only barrier in this fight for equality. Let's step aside. It's time. Let's allow equality. Thank you.